Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell Power Edge T420 Workstation Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly load and configure the system. Let's get started. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Power Edge T420. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get started on the different types of chassis you can use for this machine. Uh, on the low end, you can get a uh, four bay cabled in large form factor chassis. You can get an eight bay hot swap large form factor chassis, which is my personal favorite and what this is right here. You can get an eight bay small form factor, which is also a hot swap chassis, or you can get a 16 bay small form factor, which is also a hot swap chassis. Uh, as far as far as the CPUs are concerned, there are two CPU sockets using an LGA1356 socket, which means they're using Intel Xeon E5 2400V1 or V2 series processors. As far as the RAM is concerned, there are uh, 12 DIMM slots inside using DDR3 memory. Uh, there's a number of different speeds you can use. You can go as low as 1066, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866. I will note, though, that the 1866 will actually just clock back down to 1600, which is actually the true fastest speed that you can use for the T420. Uh, as far as the different RAM, uh, RAM sizes you can use, you can go as low as a 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, or all the way up to a 32 gig uh, module. And as far as the different types of RAM you can use, there's two types of RAM. You can use ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduce, which is also known as a load reduce module. Uh, the max is actually the exact same for this machine. Uh, you can use 384 gigabytes for both using 12 32 gigs at 1600 megahertz. Uh, now that we know a little bit about the uh, the RAM, let's go ahead and uh, hop inside. I'll show you how to actually load and configure the system. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear because really you want to never be in your machine without some sort of protection. And I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. First things first, just make sure it's set to unlock. If it's not, just get a simple Phillips head and you can switch it to the unlock position. Pop it open just like pretty, any other, pretty much any other machine you've been in. All right, so you will notice when you get in here, um, there is an air baffle on the top that is, uh, you know, there for just obvious reasons to keep good airflow for the uh, the CPUs and RAM, keep them cool. But you're going to need to remove this to gain access to to the CPUs and RAM. But one thing I'd like to note before we get in, uh, on the air baffle, it'll actually tell you in advance that this is CPU one and this is CPU two. Uh, it might be hard to see on the camera, but also down here on the plastic, it even has um, labeled all the DIMM slots as far as what's A1, A2, uh, B1, B2, so forth. So it is actually labeled here and labeled on the motherboard. Uh, so when you remove this, you just want to lift it straight up. And just be careful when you're lifting it straight up because uh, the heat sinks are rather tall, as you'll see. And uh, you don't want to accidentally nick any of these capacitors uh, that are hanging off over here because you could potentially damage the, uh, the back plane. So just lift straight up and be careful with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over. As we discussed, there are 12 DIMM slots and two CPUs. This is CPU 1 and this is CPU 2. CPU 1 controls the six DIMM slots over here and CPU 2 controls the six DIMM slots over here. With uh, CPU 1, you'll notice that they are color coded. Uh, and labeled as well. So uh, the start of the channel uh, is the white dim slot and the second dim slot in the channel is black. Uh, so you will notice that there are two dims per memory channel. And this is very important because uh, this is a DDR3 based machine and if you were using ECC registered memory, uh, you could run into the rank rule if there were three DIMMs per channel, but that's not an issue here uh, with the, the T420 and you can load it up completely with 32 gig ECC registered and not have to worry about it, them being quad rank. So uh, anyone out there that was wondering if that would be an issue, it would not be. So, um, all right, so first things first, let's go ahead and show you if you were loading this machine, and not every person out there is maxing it out, so what we're actually about to do is load it up with uh, 1232 gigs, um, but let's just say you wanted to put in, you have two CPUs, and you were like, you know what, I, I want to have six eight gigs, or you know, six four gigs, or something to this effect, and you want to make sure that you're maximizing your overall performance. Uh, the way that you want to properly load it is make sure that you have an even distribution throughout all of your memory channels. So what that means, if you were putting six in, you would actually put them in only the white DIMM slot. Uh, because the white is the start of the channel. So you'd put them in, uh, so this is A1 right here, A2 right here, and then A3. So you would load up A1, A2, A3, and then you'd come over here, and this is uh, B1, 
this is B2, and this is B3. So you would literally load up A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, and you leave all the, back, uh, the black dim slots empty, um, and that way you can maximize the overall performance, okay? And I also do recommend uh, ordering in uh, sets of either six or 12 so uh, that you do have a good even balance across all of your channels, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and load them up. And I want to show you a few tips that I recommend because uh, one of the things that's really important is you will notice right here, there is a key in the middle of this notch that you're looking at right here. And this key is important because you'll notice it's not perfectly centered in the middle of the module, okay? So what that means is when you go to install them, if you have the dim facing the wrong way, you could accidentally damage the leads or you could accidentally break the, uh, the dim slot itself because you try to jam it in and you break the little plastic piece in the middle. Uh, and the next thing you know, you have a bad dim slot, which means you might have to replace the motherboard. Uh, no, none of this is a situation you want to run into because it's just a a user error so I always tell people just be really safe when you're installing just make sure you have it rotated the proper way and it is different on uh, this side for CPU 1 than it is on CPU 2 so that's one of the things that happen is someone gets in a good groove they're going they're used to everything being on this side and they forget to just switch it around when they start over here and the next thing they know they've made a simple error uh, it's you know very easy to do I've done it myself another thing that I always like to point out too is uh, I like to open all of my tabs um, I do this uh, just to make it a little bit easier so when I'm installing the modules I don't have to worry about the tabs potentially fighting me or having any resistance just putting the dim in you just want to make sure that it's just as easy as possible because really to me I'm just trying to take care of the product to make sure that the product uh, is safe and to me I always just do these little extra steps uh, to make sure that we're we're taking care of the product so okay so we're gonna go ahead and start installing this now um, and I'm gonna show you a couple other things that I always look for so when we come in here make sure again you have it uh, the right way, you'll notice I've put the module down, the module's in there and it feels like it's inserted, uh, but it's actually not inserted, uh, at least not properly and not all the way. So what you want to hear is these two clicks right here. So those two clicks let you know that you've fully inserted the module. Uh, what will happen sometimes, um, and this is probably the number one user error that we see, what happens sometimes is someone will come in trying to install the module and they'll get one side down really good and the other side might be just jetting out a little bit. And you can even see when you look at these tabs back here, and hopefully it shows on the camera, but when you look at these tabs back here, you can see these two tabs over here are completely in and these tabs are all still sticking out. That's one of the things I recommend at the end. Just go through and simply just check all your tabs and make sure uh, that there's nothing that's potentially uh, sticking out because then you might run into an issue that tells you that you have a bad dim slot and or tell you that you have a bad memory module. Um, and it's not that you have a bad dim slot or a bad memory module, it's just that uh, you just need to fully insert it. So, all right, well, we're gonna go ahead and fast forward and we're gonna install the rest of these modules and we'll be right back. All right, so you'll see we have completely loaded it up. Uh, one of the things like I was saying that I always like to personally check is I look at all the dims at the end and make sure nothing's jetted out and perfect. These are all uh, in there properly. So when we fire it up, uh, there will be uh, 384 gigabytes in here and be completely maxed out. Uh, and this machine will get a huge boost in overall performance. And that's one of the things that I always tell you, uh, tell customers is that if you're looking to increase the overall performance for your T420, um, realistically, yes, upgrading the processors will you know will help. But generally speaking, the processors are, are, are much further ahead and everything else is playing catch up to the processors. So to me, what I always tell people is upgrade your RAM. That's going to give you the biggest boost as far as uh, the least amount of uh, cost to do it. Uh, and I also recommend SSDs as well if you want to boost overall speed. So uh, those are the two things that I recommend that you upgrade if you're looking to increase the speed and uh, kind of put a Band-Aid and make uh, the life of, of your T420 several more years. So appreciate you stopping by. If you're looking for any upgrades for your T420, do us a favor, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Or even if you're looking to build out a T420, uh, we'd love to build one for you. So just email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.